said small it's freaking huge we're at this dam right behind me here um i came here yesterday found this place on google maps and there were musky everywhere i had six follows and hits couldn't hook up though so i thought i'd bring the camera back today just try and get one of these big suckers to hit i saw a couple fish that had to be over 45 inches so it's probably going to be my best chance to get my first ever northwoods musky this would be pretty freaking sweet um also Brought some smallmouth gear because it's actually a wadeable river farther down. So might be having a little bit of multi-species action, but the main goal today is to catch a big muskie. So this is where I had about 90% of my muskie action yesterday. Because if we can't get bit one more time, I throw this little crankbait. I was throwing a spinner yesterday. I don't necessarily think it was the bait because I had some hits on top water too. So hopefully with this crankbait, I can just get that many more hookups with those two extra trebles. Not sure when the camera ran out, but nonetheless, we had one follow at the dam. So I am thinking, uh, and by this time yesterday, I had about three follows and one bite. So I think I'm gonna keep moving down here. I'm gonna start wading. Should be pretty fun. All right, now in the river. Let's see if we can't catch a musk. So one problem I'm seeing right off the bat is that these fish, I think are feeding on craws a lot smaller than the one I have tied on. Got a pretty normal sized craw on like that you put on the back of a jig or you know a regular sized shaky head. And all the craws I'm seeing in the water are really small, about that long, maybe an inch, inch and a half long. And I'm pretty sure I'm throwing a three inch craw right now. So it's, you know, my bait's almost two times too big. So, hey, but maybe I'll weed out the smaller fish then. So in essence, what I'm doing on the shaky head. I believe it's a 30 second ounce shaky head. Rarely am I casting, you know, straight downstream. I'm using braid down to ultra sensitive fluorocarbon leader so I can feel everything that it's doing. Once it hits the bottom like that, I just felt it hit bottom. I'm just hopping it back along those rocks. Once I get it up next to a rock, I'm just sitting there and I'm shaking it. And what's that, what that's doing is it's letting the, the craw, I guess claws, shake around a little bit kind of attract anything in with that vibration. And the nice thing about, I wish I could get it on snake so I could show you, but the nice thing about this uh, Gippet Bates Hypercraw is it's got paddle tails on those claws. So when you sit there and shake it, it just, those claws just go everywhere. And then when you're reeling it in too, those claws flap. So it's a real good bait for on a swim jig. Um, also on this shaky head, it's really, really key for getting into those little crevices and then you can shake it around, but I got it too deep into one of those crevices right now. So this is actually our first spot that actually looks really, really good. We got basically a, a, a deeper hole right in front of me and then comes up to that point. So that current's gonna be pushing up against that point, digging out a deeper hole. So Finally, there we 
we go. That's what we came here for. Not quite the size we're after, but and that's on the Get Bit Baits Hyper Craw. Good little, you know, 13, 14 inch smallie. Look how fat that fish is. These fish in here are so incredibly healthy. Look how dark he is too. Awesome color river smallmouth. Little guy, but I'll take it for the first fish of the day. It's been a while. I think I've been out here for about three hours. So had some bites. Uh, lost one similar to this one, probably a little bit bigger, but we're gonna let this dude go. Still munching craws. You know the nice thing about a get pit baits plastic, I know I turned that the camera on about halfway through the fight there, but he jumped about three times and usually when a uh, you know a smallmouth jumps they shake that and that plastic just falls right off. But these get bit bait craws you know they don't they're just they're super super tough plastic kind of like a z-man sort of deal uh, but even tougher in terms of they don't stretch all the time they're just a tough plastic still yet soft enough though that with that shaky head just pinched right down and I, he was hooked so didn't even realize he was on at first I thought it was a rock i've been getting snagged so many times Well, decided to throw the popper for a little bit. I'm gonna give him a drink a little bit. He's got water. All right, look at that smallie. That is just a slab. Like it's still only like 14, 15 inches. Look at the size of the tail on that thing too. Hit that little pop R. Just threw it right underneath a little riffle area. Look at that fish, dude. Yes. Let's see if I can't get a release on him here. He bit down on my finger. There he goes. Dude, that's so sick. Yes. I just had a feeling when I put that popper on, and I was like, oh man, they might hit this. A little bone color popper. Just short little twitches, not like, you don't want to be yanking on it, especially with a spinning rod. Maybe there had to be a fish below that riffle area. It's just textbook where he's supposed to be. You can't get more textbook than this. He's just waiting right behind the, waiting right, waiting right behind the rocks for a, Easy meal and smoke the popper. <laughs> Sorry, I haven't had my camera on for any of the bites so far, but you know, I'm trying to save battery. It's the only battery I've got for this camera, so keep moving, boy. Definitely ate it though. Oh, number two on the popper, dude. Yes, look at that. There we go, in the mouth. Just hooked a little bit sideways. That's why I thought he was so big. Now we're figuring something out here. All right, let's throw this little dude back. He's probably the smallest one of the day, to be honest. You're sweet, dude. Oh, shit. <laughs> that is about the least grace graceful uh, release you'll ever see. Oh, wet, no. Again, just sitting behind those rocks in a riffle area. It's just so textbook. It's so cool to have an opportunity to fish a body of water like this, but it's basically untouched. I haven't seen a single piece of trash. You know, it's awesome, totally public, too. It's crazy. No, no, wouldn't that pop her? Pretty simple retrieve, just stuck it out there by those riffles. Kind of, you see the tip of my rod just boom, 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 boom. And when he hits, let it sit for like half a second and then set the hook. I do like throwing poppers on spinning rods like this for these river smallmouth and because they, you know, any kind of small creek scenario, I always use a spinning rod. This is a two-piece 
uh, Shimano Convergence. I believe this is a seven foot medium. And I like that seven foot because as you can see that last fish, it was all in these rocks and I can use that little bit, like six inches extra than a, you know, a normal six six or even a six foot to get him up over those rocks and just kind of muscle that 20 pound braid a little bit more. So this 20 pound Power Pro, um, especially with a popper, I'm just gonna use that straight down. Uh, with the shaky head earlier, I did have an eight pound, uh, uh, eight pound blue label fluorocarbon leader. And then the reel is just a classic Shimano Sedona 2500 size. Um, really awesome size reel for this, you know, close quarters situation. Uh, especially with these smallmouth, they can fight real hard. And that drag is super, super smooth. The other thing I would say is essential when wading a creek or, you know, fishing a river like this, polarized sunglasses. I mean, when I take these off, I can barely see what I'm stepping on. So having something like this for a surface like this is pretty essential. The other thing too to keep in mind when you know, casting up at these riffle areas like this is you want to pick your spots pretty pretty accurately because smallmouth, they're not really going to want to move too much to get to a meal. They're, the whole reason they're behind these riffle areas is they're just sitting there and whatever gets washed over, they're just gulping. So when you're fishing like this, you almost kind of want to let it drift over the riffle area and you really want to pick it apart. But you want to get a cast in at about every, you know, deeper part of the riffle area because that's where those smallmouth are going to stage up and then attack your bait. Guys, I just missed a giant. I just missed an absolute giant. Came all the way out of the water. My drag screamed out. And he was off. I literally thought he broke me off. I thought it was a pike. That hurts, dude. Brand new popper too, the hooks are fine. That would have just been the perfect like cap on the day. We're almost back. Shoot. Where did he go? So I don't know. Maybe he was hooked for a little bit. Because my drag is... Oh, did you see that? Way out there. Way out there. They're eating top now, guys. They're eating top water. You doing way out there, Smalley? Smalley Bash? Alright guys, so I'm hoping that because it's later in the day, um, these musky might be a little bit more charged up, so I'm gonna keep throwing this jerkbait, crankbait thing, whatever it is. And I got a little swim bait that I might try to at some point. But hopefully we get bit, should be pretty cool. <laughs> Yes,